Emperor Palpatine has been around for decades. Arguably the character that has had the greatest impact on the Star Wars universe from Episode 4 Timeline Forward, or Episode 1 depending on how we're listing them, to all the way to Episode 9. We all heard his heinous laugh for the Star Wars Rise of Skywalker trailer, that insidious cackle of Sheev Palpatine. The man who would become known as Darth Sidious. This is the story of absolute power corrupting absolutely, of how the Force works in mysterious, indirect ways, and how true evil helped bring about balance of the Force. Before I begin though, let me thank you for watching JLS Comics and pressing play. If you like videos like this, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you want, the subscribe button as well. I do upload new comic book, movie, superhero, anime content every week. So, with that out of the way, let's jump into our tale of old Palpy. One time, Palpatine was sitting with Anakin, a beautiful operatic performance unfolding before them. Palpatine told the tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Darth Plagueis was a Sith Lord, a Sith Lord who could save others from death, who could manipulate life and death, and who could affect the very fabric of the physical aspect of the Force, midichlorians. Palpatine told Anakin that Plagueis became so powerful that the only thing he feared was losing his power. Plagueis taught his apprentice everything he knew, everything the Jedi considered forbidden and unnatural. Then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. What Palpatine didn't tell Anakin, though, was that he was that apprentice. What he also left out is that this midichlorian manipulation, this parthenogenetic force control, resulted in Anakin's own creation. More on that in a moment. Palpatine's rise to power is foretold in his given Sith name. It's slow and treacherous, crafty and gradual, deceptive and cunning. It's insidious. But before all this, before the galaxy voluntarily gave up the Senate to thunderous applause and fell to fascist imperial rule, a young boy was born on the planet of Naboo to the old aristocratic house Palpatine and to his father, Kosinga Palpatine. Sheev hated his father. He hated that his desire for power was much more than anything his father ever desired. It was sometime around 75 years before the Battle of Yavin on the Midrim planet of Naboo when Sheev first met Darth Plagueis. Plagueis was on the planet of Naboo under the guise of Hugo Damask, CEO of Damask Holdings, when Hugo took on Sheev as an apprentice, influencing the young man and grooming him for his evolution. In one final horrific act, Sheev murdered his father and slaughtered everyone on the ship that they were on. It was then that Hugo, truly Darth Plagueis, took on the orphan Sheev as his apprentice and gave him the name Darth Sidious. This was all covert and secret as the Jedi believed the Sith had been wiped out centuries ago. Darth Plagueis was to pass on the lineage of Sith knowledge, mythology, and power that spanned all the way back to the Old Republic and to Darth Bane. Darth Bane was the originator of the Sith rule of two, a rule that mandated only two Sith could rule at any time. One Sith to hold the power, the master, and one to crave it. The apprentice could only exist at one time. Darth Plagueis the Wise taught Palpatine in all the ways of the Force, even the most unnatural of ways. Beginning with 1999 Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, we learned the story of Palpatine's ultimate rise to power. In this tale, Senator Sheev Palpatine of Naboo, through his close association with other Republic senators, became friends and a close ally to Finis Valorum, who was the Supreme Chancellor at the time. His term was plagued with corruption and deception by other unethical politicians and actually by Sheev himself. Valorum had sent Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan on a mission which found them on the planet Tatooine and to a young boy named Anakin Skywalker and his mother Shmi. In issue 25 of the Marvel comic book Darth Vader, we see a vision of Vader's own conception of a wraith-like Palpatine in his eerie, deformed form hovering over Shmi Skywalker, his hands slowly enclosing around her, a concentrated swirl of dark Sith energy forming over her pregnant belly. It confirms that Palpatine did in fact create Anakin Skywalker in her womb. That Palpatine created his own apprentice, his own heir, and his own lineage. He, Palpatine, brought about the Skywalker saga. It's power he learned from Darth Plagueis in which he spoke about to Anakin briefly in Revenge of the Sith, which we just talked about a moment ago. In an early rough draft for Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine was supposed to say this. I've waited all these years for you to fulfill your destiny. I arranged your conception. I used the power of the Force to will the midichlorians to start the cell division that created you. And again, it was then supposed to say he didn't believe him, and then Palpatine goes on. When you clear your mind, you will sense the truth. You could almost think of me as your father. So this makes Palpatine a Sith Lord, Luke Skywalker's grandfather, the creator of the fulfillment of the prophecy. Is this the only time that Palpatine did this though? Might he have also done this to a woman on a Jakku? Will the answers be revealed in his submerged throne room on the second Death Star? We'll find out. In two canon novels, Aftermath, Empire's End and Aftermath Life Debt, we learn that Palpatine had constructed a failsafe program that would destroy the Empire in the event of his death. One piece of this contingency network was actually housed on Jack 
Jakku. It was disguised as the Jakku Observatory. To why Jakku, which just happened to be the planet of Rey's birth, Admiral Thrawn was giving information to the computers housed at the observatory to plot out routes into the unknown regions from which snow hails and which houses the dark secret of the Empire's power. It's where Palpatine would grow his shadow empire perhaps the First Order itself, but that's the end of our Skywalker Palpy Saga. We're still sort of towards the beginning here. After the failure to resolve the Trade Federation's Naboo blockade, Queen Amidala called for a vote of no confidence in the Senate. Valorum was deposed and Sheev was made Supreme Chancellor. The thing is, it was Palpatine himself who had suggested the blockade of Naboo, knowing full well it would lead to senatorial turmoil, the deposition of Valorum, and ultimately his takeover of the Supreme Chancellorship from his peer. After Palpatine killed his master, Darth Plagueis, in his sleep, he needed to preserve the rule of two, so he took on his first apprentice, a Dathomarian named Maul. After a relatively short time, Darth Maul was defeated by Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, who cut him in half in an epic battle, believed dead, though it turned out he wasn't. Sidious took on a new apprentice, the corrupted Jedi apprentice, Count Dooku, who took on the Sith name Darth Tyrannus. Speaking of Dooku, Dooku soon after this took on an apprentice of his own with the assassin Asajj Ventress. Palpatine suspected Duco wanted Ventress, who was becoming more and more powerful in the dark ways of the Force, to assassinate Palpatine and become master in his wake, thereby also preserving the rule of two. But at one point, Palpatine convinced Anakin to kill Dooku, who beheaded him with his lightsaber. And this did a couple things. It removed his disloyal apprentice from the board, and it served as the catalyst for Anakin's full turn to the dark side. Palpatine was able to manipulate Anakin using his fear against him. His fear was that his wife, Queen Amidala, was going to die during childbirth. So Palpatine said, that he could save her if he learned the dark ways of the Force. Sidious ordered Anakin, now Darth Vader, to the Jedi Temple to kill all the Padawans, and at the same time, Palpatine issued Order 66. Darth Sidious wanted to remove the opposing senators as well as the Jedi Council, basically any influence and opposition to his power, and restructure the Republic into its own galactic empire. And Senator Palpatine became Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, ruling over what was soon to become an analog for the Roman Empire and the Nazi regime, and he would then become Emperor Palpatine. But for an entire decade, Palpatine's public-facing persona was mild, it was fair, and honestly perfectly reasonable. Behind the scenes, however, he was fully Darth Sidious. There was a Jedi Master named sifo who secretly commissioned the creation of a massive clone army, remember the clones, using the Mandalorian bounty hunter Jango Fett as a genetic blueprint. The thing is, this is before Lucas made him his own true character. Neither Jedi Master Yoda nor Mace Windu had ever heard of sifo and the name was a pseudonym for Sidious himself. Think about it, sifo Sidious, phonetically they're similar. But while never mentioned again in the films, Lucas fleshed out the character, giving him a backstory in this novel called Labyrinth of Evil, where we learn that sifo was an old friend of Count Dooku's. To represent his power, Chancellor Palpatine evolved, becoming Emperor. Palpatine. He commissioned the construction of a Death Star, a weapon so powerful it could destroy entire planets. Palpatine put Grand Moff Tarkin in charge of the Death Star. In A New Hope, the first Star Wars movie, we only meet Darth Vader and Grand Moff Will of Tarkin, preserving the aura and mystery around the Empire. Palpatine's mentioned briefly. They mentioned him in his uh, dissolution of the Senate. They said that the Imperial Senate will no longer be of any concern to us. I've just received word that the Emperor has dissolved the Council permanently. The last remnants of the Old Republic have been swept away. Part of the reason for his lack of inclusion is that by 1977, George Lucas really hadn't quite fleshed out what that character was supposed to be or who he would be. Lucas originally envisioned a Richard Nixon-esque type of character that was evil himself, but also still a puppet to a shadow group. So let's jump to the end of Return of the Jedi. Luke failed to turn to the dark side. The Emperor's attempt to lure this rebellion to a fully operational Death Star was backfiring. Then his apprentice, Vader, threw him down a shaft, seemingly to his death. So how is he back for Rise of Sky? Skywalker. Well, this is where we jump over to Legends. Transfer Essence. It's a dark and unnatural skill that only the most powerful of Sith could ever master. Darth Vitiate, Darth Bane, and Darth Plagueis all knew of Transfer Essence. Plagueis passed this on to Sidious. It allows the user to cheat death by transferring their essence, their soul, and their consciousness into another host. Remember I mentioned the Jakku Observatory? Another machination that Sidious put in place, should he be destroyed to ensure the survival and the survival of the Empire, was to create clones of himself. 
The precedent's been set for him to create clones. He created clones of himself. Lifeless husks that he could transfer himself into so he wouldn't die. He did exactly this many times, coming back to rule the galaxy time and again. So, after Return of the Jedi, did Palpatine's failsafe program activate, which would create another order in the unknown regions? Did he do what he did to Shmi with Rey or Hux's parents? Hux, by the way, is written as an illegitimate child, allegedly, to a washroom lady, which aligns somewhat to Shmi's upbringing as a slave to a hut. Look how similar Hux looks to a young Sheev. Was Snoke not yet a Sith, the apprentice of Palpatine? Andy Serkis said that he's not a Sith, but perhaps what he meant was not yet a Sith. Did Palpatine allow Snoke's death because he sensed treachery in the same way that Dooku plotted against Palpatine with Ventress? Was it Palpatine always trying to lure Luke to the dark side who influenced his grandson in his moment of weakness with Kylo Ren? Lots of questions, but hopefully you now know all about Emperor Palpatine, all we know so far, the Sith Lord known as Darth Sidious, and you'll be prepared for whatever comes next. Thanks for watching and listening, my friends. If you're here and haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button and join this rapidly growing JLS Comics family and be one of the first to know every time we upload new content each week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.